He is known for his extensive travels in the East, specifically Persia and India, during the 17th century. He is recognized for his detailed and accurate accounts of the cultures, customs, and languages of the regions he visited. His name is Jean Chardon. In the annals of exploration, there are individuals whose insatiable curiosity and adventurous spirit have shaped our understanding of the world. One such remarkable figure was Jean Chardon, a French merchant and explorer who embarked on a series of daring expeditions to the East in the 17th century. Born in Paris to a wealthy merchant family, Chardon followed in his father's footsteps and began his journey to the East Indies in 1664, accompanied by a fellow merchant, M. Raisin. Their odyssey took them through Constantinople and the Black Sea, finally reaching Persia in early 1666. It was in Persia that Chardon's life would take a momentous turn. In the same year, he was appointed as the agent for the purchase of jewels by the Shah, Abbas II. This prestigious position not only allowed Chardon to immerse himself in Persian culture but also provided him with invaluable opportunities to explore the region further. In 1667, Chardon ventured to India and returned to Persia in 1669, where he stayed until the following year. During his time in Persia, Chardon had the privilege of being mentored by Mirza Sefi, a learned nobleman who imparted his knowledge of the Persian language to him. Under Mirza Sefi's guidance, Chardon penned an account of the coronation of Solomon III, which was published in 1671. Eager to continue his explorations, Chardon embarked on another expedition to the east in August 1671. His journey took him to Constantinople, where he stayed from March to July 1672. However, political tensions between the Grand Vizier and the French ambassador made the situation precarious for French subjects, prompting Chardon to make a daring escape across the Black Sea. From there, he embarked on a perilous adventure, traveling through Kaffa, Georgia, and Armenia, finally arriving in Isfahan, Persia, in 1673. Chardon's time in Persia was marked by both triumphs and hardships. In Samagrelo, he fell victim to thugs who robbed him of all his possessions, except for two small bundles. Undeterred, Chardon continued his exploration and spent the next four years in Isfahan, following the court and embarking on journeys throughout the land. From the Caspian Sea to the Persian Gulf and even the River Indus, Chardon's travel spanned vast territories, affording him a comprehensive understanding of the region. These expeditions proved fruitful for Chardon, both intellectually and financially. Through his ventures, he amassed a considerable fortune, which prompted his decision to return home. In 1677, he completed his voyage around the Cape of Good Hope, arriving in Europe once again. Chardon's remarkable experiences and discoveries were documented in his renowned work, Voyages de Mons. Le Chevalier Chardon. The first volume, Journal du Voyage, de Chardon en par CDA UX in Zorintals, was published in 1686 in London. This volume chronicled Chardon's journey from Paris to Isfahan, complete with detailed descriptions and illustrations. Three additional volumes were planned but never came to fruition. Chardon's writings were highly regarded by his contemporaries and subsequent scholars. His simple yet vivid writing style provided a faithful account of his observations and experiences. Even today, his works are recognized for their valuable insights into Muslim nations. While portions of his works have been included in various collections of travels, there has yet to be a complete English translation. In 1681, Chardon sought refuge in England due to the persecution of Protestants in France. He was warmly received at court and appointed as court jeweler. He married a Protestant lady, Esther de Lardinier Payne, and carried on a flourishing trade in jewels. Chardon's dedication to his craft and his passion for Oriental studies earned him a fellowship in the Royal Society in 1682. Chardon's later years were spent in Tenon, where he continued his scholarly pursuits. He passed away in Chiswick, London, in 1713 and was buried in Turnham Green. A funeral monument in Westminster Abbey commemorates his legacy, bearing the inscription, Sir John Chardon, no men sibi fake it yundo, he made a name for himself by going. Jean Chardon's expeditions and writings have left an indelible impact on the world, expanding our knowledge of the East and inspiring future generations of explorers. His fearless spirit of adventure and dedication to understanding different cultures serve as a testament to the enduring power of exploration. Jean, a French traveler and merchant, embarked on a remarkable journey that would shape his life and legacy. He set sail from his hometown of Constantinople, venturing into the vast expanse of the Black Sea. His destination was Persia, a land of mystery and intrigue. Through treacherous waters and unpredictable weather, Jean navigated his way to the bustling city of Isfahan, the jewel of the Safavid Empire. In Isfahan, Jean immersed himself in the vibrant culture and rich history of Persia. He marveled at the grand palaces, intricate mosques, and bustling bazaars. 
His keen eye and sharp intellect allowed him to capture the essence of the city in his writings. From the opulence of the royal court to the daily lives of ordinary Persians, Jean's observations were meticulous and insightful. But his journey did not end in Isfahan. Jean continued his exploration, venturing further east to the city of Kaffa, a vital trading port on the Black Sea. He witnessed the bustling maritime activity and the diverse array of goods being traded, from silk and spices to precious metals. Jean's accounts of the bustling trade routes and the vibrant multiculturalism of Kaffa became invaluable sources for future scholars. As Jean traveled through the region, he ventured into the rugged landscapes of Georgia and Armenia, capturing the beauty of the mountains and the resilience of the local communities. His encounters with the people of these lands offered him a deeper understanding of their customs, traditions, and ways of life. After years of traversing the vast expanses of Persia and its neighboring regions, Jean's voyage eventually led him to the Cape of Good Hope, marking the end of his incredible odyssey. His first-hand experiences, meticulous observations, and deep understanding of the Safavid Empire earned him the admiration of Enlightenment thinkers and modern scholars alike. Jean Chardin's remarkable journey through Persia and beyond not only enriched his own life but also left an indelible mark on the world. His work continues to be a valuable resource for understanding the Safavid Empire, shedding light on its history, culture, and people. If you want to discover more adventurers on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button for my channel, and don't forget to leave a comment in the section below, telling us which adventurers you'd like us to feature next.